Hey, it's Joel. You know, I've shown you how to do some really cool stuff with Fusion 360 and 3D printing when I showed you how to make your own drawer pulls and I made templates for that, which is really great. But what happens if the handle breaks on an already existing piece and you need to use the holes that are already drilled? How do you incorporate the real world dimensions of these holes into Fusion 360 when the part that existed before doesn't exist in full anymore? I'm gonna show you how to do that, but also, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of videos across various topics. I always learn better through videos than reading, and I'm doing a tutorial here. It just made sense to present Skillshare as the sponsor. Plus, with the link down below, the first 500 people that sign up get two months of premium absolutely free. That seems like a great deal. Thanks to Skillshare for making this video possible. The cabinet is in the bathroom and we're gonna need some things. First, we're gonna need a tape measure. It's Imperial, sorry, England. We're gonna need a notebook. This is my I like to make stuff notebook. I should get a 3D printing nerd one. And we're gonna need my phone to take a picture. With these tools, we can take dimensions, bring it into the computer, and then make something that will fit to the bathroom. Here it is. This is it right here. It's broken. This one, this one's fine, but this one's broken. So we're gonna create two just so that we have a matching pair. I can open this up and using a Phillips screwdriver, I can take out this screw. So there's our holes. This is what the handle looked like before. It was, um, I don't know, it was kind of boring. It was plain. I think we're just gonna recreate something similar. It should be easy. So the first thing we, we wanna do is we wanna Take a picture. The reason we do that is because we can import this into Fusion 360. The picture that you take, you want to include elements from the real world that you can measure. And if I measure from here to here, I get 11 inches exactly. And if it knows the point from here to here, I can get this dimension, which means it's gonna know where these points are because they're going to be along a, an axis that is dimensioned. Now for the notebook. This is where we're going to start writing stuff down because I'm gonna forget. So we've got 11 inches across. For the old handle, let's see, it is, it's roughly three and a quarter by a half inch. Do you need to see how deep it is? Because we want it to be similar. And we're looking at, it comes out three quarter of an inch. Three quarter of an inch. We also need to use some calipers on the screws, but I don't have my calipers with me. They're upstairs, so we're gonna take a screw with us. We've got this distance here, and we've measured enough for this handle to create a new one. We're gonna take the screw, let's go back upstairs, and design this thing. Yes, yes, time to get designing. Here we are, we've got, wait a minute. There we go, we've got Fusion 360 loaded up. Really quickly, here we go, insert attached canvas. I'm gonna select this face, and I'm gonna go over here, and I'm gonna select this image. And I'm gonna hit okay. That's our image. Oh, let's see, let's rotate around. So we're gonna click on the back face. There it is. We want to now know what this distance is. And we do that by, over, by going over here, hitting the right mouse button and going calibrate. I wanna make this nice and big. And you grab a point over here, and then you grab a point over here, and it's gonna tell you how far across it is. But we know what the dimension should be. It should be 11 inches, which I'm gonna do that. And it makes it huge because it scales it now correctly. We know when designing on top of this, we're actually going to be using the correct real world dimensions, which is great. So if I go over here and I get myself a rectangle and I draw on this plane right here, I'm gonna bring it out. And I remember it was 3.25 inches across, and it was 0.5 inches tall. I'm gonna hit enter, and uh, <laughs> it was easy. So now what I'm gonna do is move this around until I think it looks about right on those, on those holes. What I can do if I want center, this is kind of a fun trick. So I'm gonna hit L for line, and that little triangle there tells me that that is the center point right there. I'm gonna grab this and I'm just gonna 
gonna line it up just like so. Just kind of eyeball it. Now, if I click that line, I can hit X and that makes it a construction line. There we go. I'm gonna go sketch, circle, center circle, or I can just hit C. I'm gonna bring it out. We do need to do something though. I'm gonna hit escape. I'm gonna bring you back out here. We do need to do something though. So we got that screw here and we need to measure the screw. It is 3.6 millimeters in diameter. But what I want to do is make it so that the hole is slightly smaller since this screw is gonna have to bite into the plastic a little bit. So what I'm gonna do, I measured 3.6. What I'm gonna do is make this hole 3.5 millimeters in diameter. And that's an easy one. Hit C, I'm gonna bring it out to 3.5, hit enter. That's kind of right in the center. And since we have that, that line right there, we can just bring it right over. It looks like that line runs right through the center as well. So I'm gonna hit C for circle. It's gonna bring it on that construction line. I'm gonna hit 3.5, hit enter, enter. Let's zoom in a bit just to make sure. How are we? We are looking really good, perfect. Because we're using these real world dimensions, we're not gonna dimension how far it is from the side just because we're using this to kind of line it up. We're almost done. I mean, if I hit click here and hit E for extrude and bring it out, what was it? 0.75 inches and look <laughs> look at that it's like it's as if we are designing on the actual piece uh, I do need to do a little bit of design work uh, on this just to make it nice uh, give me just a sec Almost forgot to tell you, with Skillshare, it's great because you're gonna be taught by people that know what they're doing. In fact, there's a course by Jazza, uh, you, Josiah Brooks, but you know him as Draw with Jazza, and he does a course on how to make money on YouTube and how to talk to the camera, both things that are great topics if you've ever wanted to start a channel or if you ever wanted to use YouTube as a revenue stream, but what's great is I even learned something. I mean, go figure, he's got 3 million plus subscribers. I'm sure he knows what he's doing. He's qualified to teach that course. Again, it's a Skillshare course. The first 500 people that sign up with the link down below get the first two months free. Here's something that I forgot to do, but at the same time, it kind of gives you an example of what you can do because if this is all digital design. I brought out this section, but I forgot about these holes. So I can go back here and I can edit the initial extrusion, edit feature. And if I just click here and I click here, hit okay, it covers it up, but we're still left with needing these holes. So. As long as this sketch is turned on, what I can do is click here and click, and it'll bring these out as holes into the model. And I just need to not bring it to the top. So I'll bring it out 12. There we go, and hit OK. So now we have holes in the model right there. In fact, let's drop the canvas. There we go. So there's our model. It's a super easy pull. It'll print easily, and there's the holes. There's the holes right there. I will probably print this with the holes down. I guess I could print it up. It'd be super easy to do that. But with these fillets on the side, I want the corners to be nice and that happens with this orientation. It's gonna be fine. Now, all we need to do is load this model, get it printing on the Prusa i3 Mark III and let's go see if it fits. Five top layers, four bottom layers, three perimeters, 20% infill. All right, it looks like the print's, uh, wait a minute. There we go. It looks like the print is done. Here it is on the Prusa Mark III, printed in some random PLA filament. I've got a flex plate, it removes just fine. You go back. Like I said, these were printed with some generic PLA. They look to be good. Brusa did a great job. The little fillets on the side look good. That little curve looks good. Uh, wow, well, let's talk about it. Okay, okay. I did three perimeters because I just wanted some extra rigidity, extra strength. And because that first layer squishes down, it's got a little bit of an elephant's foot. So I break out the deburring tool. I just drag it along the side there. I know this is the side that's gonna go against the wall, so I don't have to do this, but I want to. I want to do this, I want to clean it up. You can also take a piece of sandpaper and sand it on all sides, just on that corner. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> this is the part where you'd usually want to put on some some headphones and have some some great we call it sanding music. You want some some music to, to finish your models. Maybe a light jazz. Or maybe some daft punk. Oh yeah. Oh this this totally works. I love this. With the models cleaned up, it's time time to go fit them. They should fit. They should fit. We're in the bathroom. Here's the big test. Here's the big... That looks pretty good. Let's see if everything fits. The goal is to have the screw embed itself into the plastic. No problems there. Then the other screw should line up. <laughs> it fit. Let's do the other one. There we go. That's it. That's how easy it is to use Fusion 360 to demonstrate real world dimensions within the application to then create models that adhere to those real world additions. That was really cool, right? We used Fusion 360 and we used real world dimensions and we made models that adhered to those real world dimensions. I know we've, we've done it before where we created the models and then we adapted the thing to the models, but this is where we took the model and adapted it to the thing. That's great. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. I'll do my best to get to those. A big thanks for everybody that watches the videos and a big thanks for everybody that made it this far. In fact, you're awesome. Beyond all that, don't forget to hug each other more, because I love you guys. As always, high five.